work finished on the Panard for the time being, Daryl and Jesse have moved on to our Panzer I restoration. We have a lot of incredible original parts to work with, like this extremely rare turret. But since this is a running restoration, it's going to take a lot of work to make everything just right. Yeah, there we go. In episode one, we watch the boys pull apart the wheel bearing assemblies. This week, we have to send away some of the wheels to have new rubber tyres put on, and Jesse gets to work on suspension units. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. Previously, we are a little bit worried about the rubber on some of these wheels, but luckily we found a place we could send them to in Toowoomba that could put some new ones on. But first, the old tyres have to be taken off. While Daz and the museum director were doing this, we noticed that we actually had two different types of wheels. One has tyres bonded to a steel band that presses onto the wheel, and the other has bonding grooves machined onto it removing the need for the rubber tyre to have a separate band. We should film the easy one, Curtis. That's because that's just talking about one go, then. Glued on or something? Or bonded on. You peel that back again, I'll do the easy one. Yeah, I don't share the shot, mate, part of my contract. That was the star. I thought they were all one solid one. They're obviously, those uh, spokes come through, there's supports in them. I wonder how the wire wheel will go on. That's some wire wheel, I'll just clean that oxide out easy. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jesse has begun work on fabricating the suspension units. We could only source one original, but we were lucky even to get this one. Having original pieces like this makes life a lot easier for us. Jesse was able to take measurements and draw the different components in CAD, and our steel supplier was able to cut them and save us a lot of time. Now all Jesse has to do is bend, trim and weld everything together. That wraps around. Corner to corner, hey? Yeah, oh, just, yeah, as much as we can. Make Joining two pieces corner to corner like this maximizes the amount of weld surface area. these together we've got to make sure that they're lined up perfect so the shafts are in line and they're not slightly out or anything. So I've just made these temporary ones up. So this one here goes in the back. I've had to turn it down so it fits in nice and snug. In the back. Now I've also oh, got one nice. here. This is the one that we've had to bend. I've had to do a fair bit of bending on it. Oh yeah. It's a little bit of a nightmare the way it kind of works. So this just goes on and locates to this one here. So is this exactly how the other ones were made? So the original ones were are fabricated like this. So, but they would have had a jig. Because we've only got to make two wheel stations up, it's not really worth me spending the time and the effort making a big massive jig up to hold it. So this is just a temporary holder. 
just to bring it all together. So this piece starts there, comes there, bends down, goes around, goes on the inside, bends up, goes around the pipe, and then finishes through on the end. So we'll fold that around now. One more bend. Just go. Yeah. I'm happy with that. That sits just above. We're happy with that. Tacking. Tacking. Tacky, very tacky. Gotta bend this around now too. So see this goes flat. So what we want to do is heat here and then just hit that in, bend it in, and then we cut a bit of angle line. Angle line goes in here and gets a hole cut in it. Jesse the blacksmith. No, never. Yep. That is the... So, oh. In there. Yeah, okay. It saves you bending it. Yeah, it's so ready to go. So you can see, so that's that part bent in. We're just joining it. See, they did it slightly different. So you can kind of see that this piece is one here. And you can see they've welded it all the way along, bent it brought it in. You can see how it finishes here. Yes. And you can actually see where they join this piece here. So we're just using an angle line because it's easier for me to just bend this yeah. piece around. But yeah. they've actually fabricated a bit that goes up and bends around. So goes in like that. Oh my god. Oh no. Good drill bit, hey. Yeah. that bit for? Is that just like a bump stop sort yeah, of thing? Yeah, so this is on the end of here, it's like a bump stop, an external one. So what they've actually done is you can see they've heated up here and they've pulled it around on both sides and then they've put a filler piece on the inside. Oh wow. I had some plate outside that was accessible so I've decided to just cut into it, taper it and we'll just trim these ends and just put that in there like that. It's just a hell of a lot easier than trying to bend something around and fit it and shape it. Totally.
so I will drill that out later on. What we'll oh, do? oh, through the uh, through the bottom of the. Well, there's bed. a bit of three mil, yeah. So. How are you gonna how are you gonna drill that? Does the drill press have enough throw? Yeah, yeah um, because it's only it's only pretty light material anyway. I'll just put it in that and just the put, it, put it in the um, put it in the vice and just do it with a pistol drill. So oh, from shed, from shed, hey. next part what's the next part so now we've got to put these in so we've got an original u-bolt that we're not sure if it's off a panzer 2 or something else this isn't the correct u-bolt but it looks very similar to this so that goes in between the housing goes in here and goes up all the way to the top there yeah and bolts on that holds the actual leaf springs in from underneath oh. the uh, we've actually got some uh u-bolts that we've found yeah these go in like that out the top and bolt on right. so see they go in there like that and they clamp the spring in yep. so the spring is actually held in on the end here via the bolt oh that hole we just made so that's what holds it in. So that's just a clamp. So that clamps these up tighter, all right? And then your other wheel goes on in through this hole here and that allows, when you're driving, it flexes up and down. This will move up and down, back and forth. Wow. So that's what we're making now. We've got to make these holders. So if you look from the top, you can actually see they're scalloped in. See, they're yeah, scalloped in to allow room. Okay. So how are you going to tackle this then? So I've already pre-cut our pipe. So I've pre-cut six of them already, and I've also pre-cut our scallop beforehand. So the scallop will go in there like this. So we'll put that like that, and we'll trace it, and we'll go out there and cut it. How do you cut it? What I usually do is I'll do a heap of little cuts, and then I'll come through on the side and then, you know, go around with the grinder. Gotcha, clean little, it out. Wedges. Yeah, little, little wedges. Yeah, little wedges. That's the one, little wedges. <laughs> So this hole, we're going to be filling that in. We've got a piece that we're getting cut by our local steel manufacturer that's going to slip in there. It fills in the gap and it also will have a 16mm hole that will be on this side. Drawn it so it fits in that shape. So we'll just slide it in and tack it on and it'll have a hole like that, pretty much. We're emulating it exactly the same as the original. You can kind of see they've done something similar with a bit of pipe too and they've just cut it and stuck it in there. So we'll do the exact same thing. Scribe it through. How good is that?
ladies. So the final, final bit is trimming this a little bit more, just trimming it out and then just slipping our pieces in that are getting laser cut. Should be a nice firm fit. Push fit. Yeah. Like hey, nice one. So once our pieces go on, they'll bolt on like that and that holds the spring hanger in. After a few days, Jesse has all these pieces welded in, but there are still a few components to go. Daryl spent the last uh, half a week, only a week, turning up all the shafts. We've got lots of different parts that go into these. They're all separate. We've also turned a temporary shaft just to hold it all together while we weld it. So this is just a piece to hold the end in square. Then this is part A. So this piece here goes in this piece here. So this will be welded in like that. You can see it's got a shoulder it presses up to. This is like a spacer washer crush block. Like We've got the next one. So this is B. We've actually stamped on the housing. Just don't want to go to all this work and then um, kind of mess it up. <laughs> Put the wrong ones there. That would never happen here. So you can see they press in firm. This is what comes out of our hull. And this shaft here actually rocks back and forth. So that's our rocker, our main rocker. And then you've got this pin at the back here. will actually hold one of the wheels on. Okay. The road wheels. Yep. So that's why this shaft's different. So again, we've done, got a shoulder. Slides in and you've got A. So that goes in here. In. This one again, this one's me. Slides in that way. That way. So that's a temporary shaft? No, so this is this is one one of the shafts we're actually gonna be using. Because the road wheel has a bearing on the inside of the actual wheel which spins on this shaft here. And that, that'll just hold it, keep it in square, yeah. while you weld. Yep. Now we'll just double check it and make sure the measurements are all right. This is a really special project. There are only five surviving Panzer IV Bs, and only one of these is a runner that we know of. It's only just the start of the build, but we cannot wait to share the rest of the journey with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.